Moin Moin, let's talk about finally MOS devices. We'll start out with uh, MOS electrostatics and the MOS capacitor. This is in the context of uh, spending almost a semester long on PN junctions, Schottky diodes, and before that we dealt with materials and uh, statistical um, uh, approaches to carriers, and now we're finally getting to MOS devices. These are metal on semiconductor devices. They are um, uh, somewhat related to the bipolar trans uh, transistors, but there are significant uh, differences in operation, even though today they have um, um, almost ballistic transport in both devices, so the concepts of how to model them in the, uh, the advanced stages and features of these devices turn out to be become really similar. But uh, we'll start out with um, uh, the uh, electrostatics, of course, and some background, and uh, we'll uh, calculate the MOS capacitance uh, at the end of this uh, 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 section here from 25, okay? All right, so um, just as a reminder, MOS, metal oxide semiconductor, and uh, it can be a capacitor. We'll start from there with a one-dimensional structure, and then the, the FET is really always a two-dimensional beast. Uh, we'll get to that in the next sections. This makes up 90% of the market of semiconductors or more. And sort of a, here's a reminder, what is the market? So today we're dealing with MOS devices by uh, and large. Before that, um, bipolar transistors, uh, not as uh, bulky as the one sketched here, but bi bipolar transistors dominated the market. And um, before that we had relays um, and tubes well, tubes and before that, relays. And what determined the um, adoption of this technology was really a, a matter of temperature management and integration density. How many things can you put together in a closed space, right? Vacuum tubes, uh, these computers uh, would require room full, uh, get really hot, and, and um, couldn't be integrated very densely. But temperature was really a critical element there. Same with bipolar, um, they were um, consuming too much power compared to the MOS devices. And today we are at the MOS devices where they are at the limit of we can't, of us unable to reduce the power consumption in these devices. So really temperature and size determine the integration level of what you can achieve. And uh, today we're studying NC FETs and tunnel FETs uh, po as possible solutions to the power problem. And the whole research field is also diversifying and looking at biosensors and displays, etc. But the MOS, the traditional transistor, is coming to the end of its roadmap. And we'll explore some of these features at the, at the tail end of this lecture series in this class. All right. So, just as a reminder, where did we come uh, to this MOS device, right? It was Gordon Moore, co-founder of Intel, who predicted the downscaling of these devices, but it was an economic law of making more for less. And today we have an integration density that is quite amazing to the order of 10 to the 9 uh, transistors, so a billion transistor on a chip. and. Um, I compared this in the interaction clause to advancements in other technologies and other products. And the transistor that we're going, beginning to discuss in this uh, segment of the class is just blowing anything out of the water, really. So uh, let's dive into this. Um, let's again try to briefly sketch the operation of an MOS device. Um, now uh, we can uh, imagine that you have a channel up here where there's electrons flowing and uh, we have a source uh, drain voltage applied and even under um, a high gate voltage where we think this device is shut off there's electrons flowing now we ramp up the gate voltage and we open the channel more and more electrons flow um, this transistor just like the um, uh, BJT has a limit of 60 millivolt per decade. It cannot turn on steeper. It cannot turn on like this. 
it has a fundamental limit. Because the ideal switch, you would like it to be like this, right? You'd like to turn it on with little voltage and immediately saturate. And um, you turn it on harder, you reach a threshold. We will be discussing what a threshold is in uh, an MOS device, what that means for a channel, how to form a channel. And uh, I've shown these slides in the beginning of uh, the course, and now uh, a conduction band might have a meaning to you. A P and N doping has, has a meaning to you. This, this density of states I sketched out has a meaning to you. This parabolic bulk disp um, density of state means something. You'd, the Fermi function that then ultimately translates here in the a sub-threshold swing for 60 millivolt per decade starts to make sense. So we addressed a bunch of these fundamental issues. We're beginning to speak the same language. Now we're going to do this for MOS devices. Um, I mentioned this also in the beginning. We, we really started out from material choices. We dealt with crystals. In these modern devices, we need to deal with crystal symmetries, structures, geometry. We'll deal with strain. And we, these devices are ultimately also three-dimensional, and they're nanoscaled. So uh, we will not cover this in the course of a quantum mechanical treatment of a nanowire and what the modes are, but you're now well on the, will be well on the way of understanding these devices uh, in a quite fundamental way. Okay, but let's set the stage again, uh, some basic configurations of a MOSFET. Um, we had the sketch here of the BJT, right? We want to control electron flow by uh, injecting a base current. This is very different. Uh, uh, a MOSFET is quite different. Source and drain are quite far away in principle from each other. And there is a channel that is being formed for electrons to flow. Okay? Now, um, the the latest modern designs, this channel is so small that it starts to look a little bit like a BJT again. But the fundamentals we'll be discussing, at least in this very section and the next one, are the traditional MOS uh, devices and the understanding of these devices. Okay, what's in a one-dimensional cut? What does this look like? You have beautiful silicon down here. You have silicon dioxide layer in between, separating um, a gate material, which is typically polysilicon, uh, from the channel. Okay, So we have multitude of materials uh, already in here as well, similar to the HBT we just discussed in the previous section. All right, so let's discuss some symbols. So here's a, a MOS device sketch. If the structure is doped and configured such that there is no channel when there is no gate, you can have that. That's called an enhancement type device. That means you, it requires a gate voltage to be applied in order to have the switch go on. So you need to apply a voltage to induce carriers here to have electrons flow from source to drain. There is a so this is an equivalent to a normal open switch. It's, you have to do something to close the switch. There is a device like this where you actually have a channel under zero gate voltage. So they're doping and the configurations of the material are such that you have electrons in the channel. That is called a depletion type device. That means you have to apply a voltage to turn it off. So the, um, so this switch is equivalent to a normally closed switch, and you have to do something to deplete it and therefore turn it off. Okay? So the upper one you have to enhance by a voltage to turn it on. The other you have to deplete to turn it off. And there is a circuit model. Uh, this um, has a, a fat um, base here. Uh, and that's uh, uh, the de depletion type device and the enhancement type device looks similar. It just doesn't have a fat of a bar in the circuit. This is just for you to know. 
we won't be using much of these symbols in this course, but you should know that there's these two different classes of MOS transistors like that. A little bit of background. Okay, this looks like a pretty sketch, right? And uh, in reality, these devices are now quite three-dimensional objects, even if the device itself is still a two-dimensional in the sketch here. It's way down here, but you have multiple layers of metal that is conduct connecting up to the uh, um, devices and the interconnect between device and device. Okay, so you might have a, a drain contact here that corresponds to this chunk over there. Okay, and then you have up to five, seven metal layers on top of each other providing the interconnect from device to device. So the de uh, device itself in the stack of, of this architecture is like this tiny little thing. So here is an example of a, a strain MOSFET. All two-dimensional uh, MOSFETs today are strained. This start, dates back to the 90, meter, uh, 90 nanometer technology. We're now at uh, uh, 10, 12 nanometer technology today in the year uh, 2020. And introducing strain had a, a very positive performance effect. And, um, and then introducing high K dielectric uh, had a dramatic effect as well. And we'll talk about the effects of dielectrics um, and why you introduce different dielectrics uh, in this uh, very section here uh, of this course. Um, if you look at the overall sketch of these devices, uh, they do begin to look like a little bit like an HPT and have the complexity of layers of an HPT like this. All right, so that's the introduction or the background to an MOS device. Now we're going to, uh, in the next section, look at bandage diagrams for that. So I'll see you there.